I urge my partners in the legislature to stop the political gains and do what is right for the people of Idaho. Governor Little makes a plea to the public as several bills aimed at ending the state COVID emergency declaration are working their way through the legislature. Strong words that some are calling spiteful. Putting out a call for help, the Black History Museum says Idaho is in need of blood donations, specifically from the black community. Why that matters. It's the sound of generosity for those in need in the Twin Falls area. How the old singing bridge is helping fine tune how one woman pays it forward. However, the seriousness of this situation demands that I speak up. I believe in my heart that what the Idaho legislature is doing is harmful to our people and wrong for Idaho. Governor Brad Little taking his internal struggle with his own Republican Party to the public today. He was talking about the rash of bills being introduced in this year's legislative session that aimed to put an end to the nearly year long COVID-19 emergency declaration that we're under right now and those that would limit the governor's power to declare such emergencies in the future. It was the reason for the special session this summer, and it was the primary purpose of majority leaders when this session began last week. How aggressive have they been? Well, eight different pieces of legislation have been introduced by House and Senate State Affairs Committees in these opening days of the session. Legislators whose names top these bills claim they are response to what they are hearing from you, the public, to put an end to the current coronavirus restrictions. So the governor took it upon himself to address you, the public, to see if he could get your help in changing their minds. Some members of the Idaho legislature are seeking political gain by perpetuating this misinformation about emergency declarations. They are playing politics. And unfortunately, the loser in this shameful game will be you, the citizens of Idaho. Members of the Idaho House admit they are not sure of the financial impact of ending the emergency declaration. Why then would you move forward with such a damaging move for our citizens, one that will cost Idaho taxpayers tens of millions of dollars? The Idaho Senate has made it clear they understand the importance of continuing to access federal assistance to overcome the crisis. Why then are you intent on moving forward with an action that will have the opposite effect. It was certainly a heartfelt plea from Governor Little, something we've seen a few times during this COVID crisis, but not so much when it comes to the legislative branch of Idaho's government. What one could call heartfelt, though, another could call inflammatory, which is exactly what House Republicans called it in their response to governor's comments today. The inflammatory comments from the governor's office do nothing but complicate the process. The life altering concerns revolving around the COVID-19 emergency continue to be in the front of our minds. Our members are working on various forms of legislation to help the state on its road to the recovery that Idahoans have been demanding for months, and we call on the governor to work with us in this process. Various forms, they said. Well, we mentioned the numerous bills and concurrent resolutions making their way through committees so far. None, House Republicans point out, that are even close to being a finished product, though. Still in the gathering of the ingredients phase to go along with the sausage making analogy, analogy that is that often comes with the legislative process. And it is a messy process. And according to Majority Caucus Chair Representative Megan Blanksma, the governor saying legislators are playing political games only makes it messier. I think the governor used a lot of loaded language when he spoke um, this afternoon. And I think that what we're trying to do here is a slow deliberative process and the consequences and the warnings that he was issuing. I, I was just disappointed because we're, we're midway through the process and it's been our goal all along to work through the process, both the house, the Senate and the governor. And so I, I was disappointed in the statement. His main concern was that ending this declaration would then pull all the federal money that Idaho is receiving because of COVID-19. And I don't think there's an interest in doing that on the part of my members. Now, there might be some that would prefer not to take any federal dollars ever, but for the most part, what we're trying to do is figure out how to address the concerns of our constituents that we've been hearing for months now. Can you give me an example of some of those that you have heard from your constituents? 
um, is primarily with the original orders about the suspension of Idaho statute. I know there have been concerns about um, how the governor suspended statute and how he treated the elections. I know there are concerns regarding the public health orders. I, I mean, I, I assume that you probably know that I sit on Central District Health, so I've borne the brunt of the emails there. And I think that, that people have legitimate concerns and we're working to find the answers. And we have been unable until we came into regular session in January to address those concerns through the legislative process. What some of these bills are trying to do is address the fact that there may be some, some holes in the way things are set up right now. I mean, we have concerns about, you know, over a billion dollars flowing into the state of Idaho. And technically the legislature has two constitutional jobs. One is to spend the money taken in. So one is to budget, the other is to review the rules. When we have this kind of an event that stress tests the system in so many ways, you're going to find a lot of different pieces of legislation and a lot of different paths to find an end that addresses all of these concerns. Some of this has been described as a power grab between the second floor and both houses of the legislature. Well, I don't think this is a power grab. I think this is to make sure that we have balanced powers and because we're all supposed to be equal branches. You know, when you talk about the administration, the judiciary, and then the legislative branch, I mean, this is schoolhouse rock and it's basic, right? And so I think that there's been concern about some of the power that previous legislators have assigned to the governor under different conditions. A lot of the laws that he is using to operate at this point were put into place during the Cold War. So they're simply looking to update them. And Representative Blanksmith said she hopes to still have a working relationship with Governor Lill. In fact, they've asked for his income several times when it comes to language, what language to put into a potential bill. She admits there are some lawmakers that are seeking to end the emergency declaration right now. But Blanksmith believes there are more surgical ways to handle that situation than how it is in some drafts that exist. The governor is correct. An emergency declaration does not shut down the state. It does not infringe upon your rights and many elected leaders have perpetuated those myths. And if it all went away today or even tomorrow, at least $20 million could go away with it, according to the director of the Office of Emergency Management. The governor urged the people of Idaho to let legis legislators know this is not the way to do this. Well, legislators, they say they've already heard from Idahoans, which is why they are doing this. And who knows, whatever adjustments they decide to make may never be put to use. A situation like this, like the one we're in right now, once in a lifetime. Then again, maybe not.